that we understand cost structure and the trade-off between variable cost and fixed costs, we're now in a position to discuss operating leverage. Fixed costs give us operating leverage. The higher the level of fixed costs, the higher the operating leverage we have, which is good on the upside, very bad on the downside. So operating leverage answers the question, how much does operating profit change when sales change? A company with high operating leverage can increase sales 1% and see profit increase 8, 9, 10%. So as an example, if the degree of operating leverage equals 1, let's put it at 1, we'll just shorten it to LEV, operating leverage equals 1, this means that a 10% increase in sales will be met with a 10% increase in operating profit because it equals 1. That's what 1 means. So you can start to think about what 2 means, what 3 means, what 4 means, etc. Well, let's have a look at how we get to the degree of operating leverage. And this is actually really simple. Our degree of operating leverage is simply just our contribution margin, our total contribution margin. Remember, if we have low variable costs, we'll have a big contribution margin. If we have high variable costs, we'll have a low contribution margin. So our contribution margin divided by our operating profit. So to, to calculate degree of operating leverage, all we need is the contribution format income statement. We just, the numbers are right there. So let's recall um, firm one and firm two from the previous video, what their contribution margins were and what their operating profit was. The contribution margin for firm one was 40,000, high variable costs. For firm two, it was 70,000, low variable costs. The operating profit for each was $10,000. So let's calculate the degree of operating leverage for firm one and firm two. Nice long pause in there while you reflect on where we are. So degree of operating leverage for firm one will be 40,000 divided by 10,000. Our contribution margin divided by our operating profit, which equals four. For firm two, it'll be 70,000 in contribution margin divided by the same 10 equals seven. So what does this mean? It's not enough to figure out what, uh, what the number is computer can figure that out. What does it mean? It means if sales increase by 20%, let's say that sales increase for firm, both firms by 20%, the operating profit for firm one will increase by 20% times the operating leverage, times four. In other words, firm one's profit will increase 80%, but firm two's profit will increase by 140% because it has a higher contribution margin and a higher contribution margin ratio. Now, here's the problem with operating leverage. It is the degree of operating leverage is sales specific. That means if we start at a different level of sales, we'll get a different degree of operating leverage. So here, firm one and firm two both had 100,000 in sales. If they had 200,000 in sales that have different profit and, and different contribution margin, well, they wouldn't divide through to the same thing. So in chart format, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, it's not a linear uh, relationship at all. So we'll put our degree of operating leverage on the horizontal and we'll put profit on the vertical axis. And there's our degree of operating leverage and we'll make the origin the break-even point. So for degree of operating leverage uh, it goes from uh, one all the way up from uh, on the sales or on the profit we start at the break-even point. So at break-even the degree of operating leverage because it's it's zero divided by something is unlimited and or sorry, it's something divided by zero is unlimited. And this is what it looks like. As we get higher and higher in profitability, our degree of operating leverage drops and drops and drops and drops until it approaches one. It can't be less than one, until it approaches one. So there we go. That's what it looks like. 
So it's not a linear relationship. We can't just calculate the degree of operating leverage once and say our company has operating leverage of four. At every level of sales, the degree of operating leverage will change. So when profit is really high, operating leverage is low. When profit starts approaching the break-even point, operating leverage gets larger and larger and larger. So just be aware of that, that it is specific to the level of sales. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but what do we do? Do we want a capital-intensive uh, um, business or do we want a labor-intensive business? This is a decision that all firms face, is which capital structure should we use? They're looking at uh, introducing a new product. The, the question would be, well, do we invest more in equipment or more in people? Which one do we do? And so we engage in something called an indifference analysis. This is the point at which, hey, you know what? At this level of sales, it doesn't matter if we're capital intensive or labor intensive. We are indifferent between the two. So at low levels of volume, we would like to be labor intensive. And at high levels, we want to be capital intensive. So if we think that volume is going to be really, really big, we want higher fixed costs and lower variable costs. But if volume is going to be low, we don't want to invest a lot in fixed costs. We want low fixed costs, and we'll take the high variable costs. We want to find a level at which we really don't care. Once we have that point, then we can look at what we think will happen. And if it's above that indifference point, we choose capital. If it's below, we'll choose the labor intensive. So the first thing we need to do is calculate our contribution margin per unit under each scenario. Under labor intensive, what's our contribution margin per unit? And under capital intensive, what's our contribution margin per unit? Then we want to solve this equation. Our contribution margin per unit times the quantity we sell minus our fixed costs must equal the contribution margin per unit under the capital intensive program times the quantity we sell minus those fixed costs. Now that looks daunting, but watch what happens here. Contribution margin per unit times the quantity we sell is nothing more than the full, than the total contribution margin. That's all that is. Now contribution margin minus fixed cost is nothing but profit. So profit under the labor intensive uh, um, process should equal profit under the capital intensive process. Once the profit under both sides equal, that means we are indifferent between labor or capital. So even though the formula looks complicated, it really isn't. All we're saying is that, look, we're indifferent when the profit under both alternatives are the same. So let's say that we have a contribution margin per unit of 12 bucks under labor intensive and a higher contribution margin, 18 bucks under capital. Our fixed costs here are 1.8 million. Our fixed costs here are 3.6 million. At what quantity do we not care if we pursue labor intensive or capital intensive process? Well, we equate them. 12Q minus 1.8 million should equal 18Q minus 3.6 million. And just solve for Q. We'll get 6Q must equal 1.8 million. All we're doing is rearranging terms. So Q equals 300,000. That is, that is what's called our indifference point. Now here's what we do with our indifference point. If we expect sales to be less than 300,000 units, we will opt for a labor intensive process because it'll be more profitable. If we think that sales will be above 300,000 units, we will opt for a capital intensive process because it'll be more profitable. So in graphical form, just to give you an idea of what this looks like, we, tr we want to try to get the lowest cost possible. That, that goes without saying. Which one provides the lowest cost? Well, let's have a look here. Here's our quantity. Here's our profit. And at 300,000, we are indifferent. Indifferent. Well, let's look at firm one. Firm one has fixed costs of 1.8 million. And at 300,000, we'll put a point here. And here is the profit line for firm one. That's the labor intensive total cost. Well, firm two has a fixed cost of 3.6 million. 
and the same indifference point, so its curve will go through that indifference point. And here is our capital intensive total cost. Now we want to be on the lowest cost curve at all times. So from zero to the uh, indifference point, we want to be on this cost curve, which is labor intensive. Beyond that, we want to be on this cost curve, which is capital intensive. The indifference point just tells us at what point we really don't care.